An existing law says taco trucks have to move every 30 minutes. If they don't, they can be charged $60. Here at the South Central City Shelter, animals only get four days before they can be euthanized. A Duke University study shows breast cancer survivors who enrolled in a 10-week yoga program that combines stretching exercises and meditation. The bill, which is modeled after an ordinance in San Francisco, would give employees of small businesses five paid sick days a year. In the case of a train collision, firefighters would have to look through the smoky conditions. Hunt on these plates convert solar power to electricity. The plates on this rooftop cost $70,000 to install. Crowds of excited fans poured into Dodger Stadium this morning, and they even opened up the gates half an hour earlier than usual. Vacation day for me. Thousands of baseball fans took the day off today to come to Dodgers opening day. Opening day against the battery chuckers? Are you kidding me? You gotta be here. The sold out stadium of more than 55,000 fans. It's like an LA thing to be here, you know. And yeah, just uh, having fun with the sellout crowd, and it's usually the, always the best afternoon on a Monday. Can't beat it. Yep. Now, today, Dodger fans are particularly excited as this season marks the 50th anniversary of the Dodgers' move to Los Angeles. I just like the fireworks at opening day and the pigeons. And with a new season comes new changes, mainly bringing a new team manager, Joe Torre. Yeah, I think he'll bring a winning team like he did to the Yankees, and uh, I think uh, we have uh, uh, a chance to get in the finals or close to the finals. I think he's uh, the man we need to put us over and, and win the division this year. But there are other changes also, such as the increased price of a baseball ticket. Um, it's not going to stop me from coming. I'm just I'm still going to complain that, you know, ticket prices and parking's going up, but you got to roll with the punches. The Dodgers already have the largest cumulative attendance of any team, more than 176 million since 1900. And today only marks the beginning of a season-long celebration of the Dodgers' 50 years in Los Angeles. In June, the Dodgers will be the first team to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Kyle and Sarah, back to you. Stacy Levin is a senior majoring in communications. She recently dropped her business minor, even though she only had three classes left. It was bringing my GPA down way too much, and I was doing so well in my other classes that that it was just hurting me and like not showing how well I was doing my other classes for my overall GPA. She says it's all because of the grading curve, a system where only a certain percentage of students receive each grade. Few get A's, most get B's and C's, and a small portion get a D or an F. In other words, even in a class of geniuses, not everybody can get an A. I don't think the curve really motivates anybody, it just frustrates people, especially because there's so many overachievers that, that really ruin it for a lot of people. A year and a half ago, the curved target GPA was set at a 2.85, which is like a B minus. Then it was adjusted to be a 3.0, which is like a B. Now it's been eliminated altogether. Students are much better than they were 10 years ago. For teachers, the new system means more flexibility in grading and grading that's more fair. They're not going to get hammered by uh, a curve that says that only a certain portion of them get an A. But still, there's a concern that the curve leads to a trend of rising grades, known as grade inflation. Continuing to move to the extreme to the point where the grades become meaningless. Companies and recruiters are recognizing this problem, which means they also take into account things like campus involvement, specific coursework, and past work experience. And although Stacy resents that the curve was eliminated too late for her, she hopes the decision will bring a positive change. It should help our younger students. Danya Burakoff, Annenberg TV News. Willis is locked up in a cage, patiently waiting to be adopted. The Bill Foundation saved him. The animal rescue group takes dogs that are going to be euthanized at city shelters and places them into the arms of a loving owner, no matter how long it takes. We have one dog over there that we've had for six years. Unlike these pups, most abandoned animals don't have the luxury of time. Here at the South Central City Shelter, animals only get four days before they can be euthanized. Last year, the city spent $2 million on euthanizing more than 15,000 cats and dogs. This sterilization law aims to lower the number of stray animals on the street which also means less cats and dogs that have to be euthanized. It's a life, whether it's human or not, it's a life. There are certain exemptions. Licensed breeders, for example, get a pass. 
but some doubt it will stop backyard breeders. I don't think animal control is going to be knocking on anybody's door. They do not have the manpower to do it. Animal control officials have to wait for someone to complain, which is like a game of tattletailing on your neighbor. The first violation gives you 60 days to alter your pet. After that, you can be fined $100 or eight hours of community service. Some pet owners think this law is extreme. An owner should have a right to decide what to do with their dog. This country is built on freedom of choice and, you know, making it mandatory. I don't think it'll solve the problem. Maybe not solve it completely, but the city is taking steps so that perhaps abandoned dogs like this pit bull will get a chance to live. Danya Burakoff, Annenberg TV News. Paula Neustadt is a breast cancer survivor. Shortly after her cancer treatment, she turned to yoga to regain her strength. Um, the energizing and the calming all put together. The instructor, a breast cancer survivor herself, understands how it helps heal the body. Spinal twists were very invigorating and also stretching the scar tissue. So the breasts have been uh, cut into, certainly doing back bends once the uh, stitches were out and I was ready and, and, and able to start doing that and stretching the lymph nodes. Relief in body, mind and soul. More ready to face life. It just reminded me who I really am, that I'm much more than my body and even if my body's failing, there's a part of me that's always all right. A Duke University study shows breast cancer survivors who enrolled in a 10-week yoga program that combines stretching exercises and meditation showed significant improvements in their ability to sleep, their joint muscle pain, their fatigue, and the intensity of their hot flashes. Symptoms Paula experienced just four years ago after her early menopause. Did a lot of taking clothes on and off and putting my hair up and taking it back down. Along with her hot flashes came weight gain. The shape of my face, the shape of all of my body. and But cancer survivors experience menopause differently. Treatments for breast cancer actually cause them to experience a more dramatic and uh, earlier menopause than they would have otherwise experienced. They have limited treatment options because of the risk of cancer reoccurrence. But yoga helps with specific poses like these. A nice way to cool the body. The gentle stretches and deep breathing exercises are shown to help improve the quality of life. It was absolutely a lifeline and is every day a lifeline. A lifeline that brings cancer survivors like Paula out of discomfort and into recovery. Danya Burkhoff, Annenberg TV News.